Hey folks, how's everyone doing today? Rudy Alpha Investments. Uh, today I want to address this, this entire concept of Wizards reprinting these, the list in the set booster packs or boxes of Zendikar uh, and moving forward in kind of what's happening to the market, the collateral damage, the side effects of what I'm seeing and what other people are at least telling me how they feel about it. Um, so for those you who don't know, uh, Zendikar is releasing pretty soon, probably in the next, I don't know, whenever you see this video, probably within a week or something like that, uh, end of September uh, 2020. So, the Zendikar Set Booster Boxes is a new type of product, around 24 packs out of 36. Fancy little packaging, more of like a master style or rectangle type of a box, a little bit taller. And it has, I guess, one every so many packs has a card from the list. The list is a list of a couple hundred, a couple hundred older Magic cards from different sets all over Magic's history, non-reserved list, and they're reprinted almost in their original form. Kind of, they're pretty much they took the same card from the mystery boxes with the little logo, the old frame, the old art, the old everything, <coughs> and they were just reprinting it. No changes, no new art, no different framework, nothing unique about it. So this has actually been snowballing into a bigger conversation than I expected. Um, yeah. Uh, so originally when I heard about this list, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was kind of neat. Kind of a nice way to change pace with the uh, kind of priceless treasures from original Zendikar and expeditions from Battle for Zendikar. Well, he here's the mindset of what I've, I've kind of gathered from everybody. The concern is that now that Wizards has shown that they're willing to reprint older cards from the Silver Age era, which is pretty much everything before the print to oblivion mindset started in RTR gate crash pre-2011, but post-reserve list type cards from the golden age of the 90s, that 2000 to 2010 range. They are kind of snipering and hitting these different cards in these different sets. Um, but they aren't changing the card. They're not changing the art, the frame, the feel, anything about it. They're essentially taking an identical card putting a different date at the bottom of it and a little logo, and you get the same card. And it's really created a lot of side effects, turbulence, and collateral damage that even I didn't really see coming. It really does change the secondary market mindset for all of these cards and all these probably millions of people that have modern era cards. And it does make them, well kind of unimportant. They're not special anymore. They're not, they're not, the collectible card game CCG of Magic the Gathering is, is kind of not collectible anymore. Um, and I guess, and when I got this one message before I filmed this video, it really triggered me to really make the video. And that was a gentleman, uh, a long-term patron sent me a message saying, Rudy, uh, I've liquidated all my modern cards and I've been buying preserveless stuff. And most of my friends have been doing the same thing, and most people I know in my local scene and my town or my LGS when it was there was doing the same thing. And I said, okay, that seems to be kind of a common mindset that doesn't seem very special or unique right now. And he then, he ended the message with one thing. And his message said, it's not about Zendikar in the list in the set boosters. It's about this product's going to be successful, so every standard set after this is going to have set boosters with cards from either the same list or a new list. And I said, wow, I didn't look at it that way. That's an interesting point. So then I sat back and I said, okay, well, this is kind of an interesting thing. Because they're either going to use the same list for a couple sets or eventually change it. And, you know, taking 300 cards on a list... And pumping that into standard boxes, or standard set box, whatever standards release, every couple months is going to have substantial long-term impacts to the millions of Magic players and collectors that collected all the modern era cards or have been into this game for a long period of time. Obviously, from Wizards of the Coast standpoint, their most important objective is quarterly revenue, monthly sales, as every other publicly traded company with the Bob suits and ivory towers need. Their goal is to bring in revenue under any circumstance. So, because of that, a lot of people are very angry. Now, of course, the comment section on this video is probably going to be sloppy and pretty angry for even bringing up and discussing the topic, which is okay. we got to do it, right? Um, 
it, it's a very bearish uh, bad sign that they are willing to reprint older cards in an identical form. That is kind of the difference. You know, reprinting a new Force of Will with new artwork or a new frame is cool. No big deal. Um, reprinting, I don't know what a good example is. Um, I don't know how about Fetch Lands, I guess you want to pick on Fetch Lands. They've never gone back and reprinted the same Fetch Lands from Onslaught, the original Fetch Lands, in the old card frame, in the original artwork, with the different margins and the old foiling. They've never done that. And everybody always said, they're never going to do that. Well, now, that's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, well, um, do you still feel that way? Because the answer is no. Uh, simply put, uh, anything non-reserve list is on the table. And that means even cards from, you know, Urza's block that are not reserve list, they will reprint an identical card. Same thing with Mercadian Mass, the, uh, the the rough era of magic, which was the uh, Odyssey, Plane Shift, Judgment, Legions boxes. Those early 2000 boxes that were some of the darkest days of magic's past. They are picking any decent cards from those sets, and they're reprinting them in identical forms. And that is a substantial game changer for a lot of people out there. A lot of people that collect these older cards, or modern era cards, or complete sets, or they like those original versions. Telling those people who've been buying those or paying premium prices for a 15, 20 year old card, and now suddenly those cards are in a new pack that they can get for four bucks, and it's an identical card. It, it's kind of, a, it, it really is a game changer. It really is a big deal. I'm trying not to come off as a, we're turning the whole channel into the Titanic and being a negative Nancy, but this is what's happening right now and it does need to be discussed and at least, you know, reported on where at least enough people can at least think about the topic. Um, now you layer on top of all of this, um, I, and our, by the way, I think these are the same cards from the mystery box. I'm assuming the list are the same with a little symbol in the original cards, these are the same type from the mystery box things, I'm assuming. And I, I guess it would be very different if they just left newer artwork or the newer card frame. But for some reason, they're choosing to not do that. And I'm not sure exactly what the motive is besides the simplest one, which is just, well, they want to sell packs. And if they leave it original, it'll sell more packs, I guess. And now we sprinkle on the secret layer continuing conversation. I mean, there are so many people... They haven't received the last one, two, three, four secret layers. And I think um, secret layers came out the end of last year, right? It wasn't the fourth quarter of 2019. So we're not even one year into secret layers. And I believe, how many are there? Like 30? 25, 30, 35, 40 secret layers? You know, not how many cards, but how many actual boxes with different names. I mean, I think it's like 40, right? 30? That's a lot. That is a lot. I mean, to, to talk about literally 10 months to have like 30, 40 different secret layers, and some of them are package deals, but dude, that is a lot of product. That is substantial amounts of Wizards printing certain cards for the secondary market directly. There's a lot of bearish indicators that are very difficult for me to defend and try to say, no, nope, Magic's still doing good. I would collect the new cards and open the packs, and it, it, it's concerning. It, it genuinely is concerning. And look, I got to say it. And yeah, I know. I sell the new product and everything. I hoard the old product. We all know where I stand on everything. But And of course, I love sealed product of all era. But it's scary right now. You know, the stay the course mentality was, of course, based mostly on old cards and keeping sealed product. But as far as the average player that has all these collections of single cards and big rows of 5,000 count boxes and modern cards... I don't know what kind of value and demand these type of products are going to have... When every standard set has a set box that's reprinting old cards in an identical fashion. And there, I do believe we're gonna, there is a very real chance that there's going to be some substantial impacts to this market long term. And it is, it is an actual concern. It, it's a very real topic. And I'm not really sure how else to go over it. So I just wanted to lay it out there. And that's kind of what's happening. And it's causing, and it is fueling the money going to the reserve list. It is fueling the money. The money is fleeing away from these products. And welcome to 2020. Anything else to say about 2020?